Have you ever wondered what the intimate life of Neanderthals was like? Well, you're not alone. Neanderthals are one of the most fascinating pieces of our evolutionary puzzle. And despite being our closest relatives, there's still so much we don't know about them. But what if I told you that new evidence has surfaced that sheds light on some of the most peculiar aspects of Neanderthal intimacy? That's right. Recent discoveries have uncovered strange and unexpected facts about how Neanderthals may have mated. So, buckle up and get ready to be amazed, because today, it is important to note and take into consideration that the Neanderthals were our closest extinct human relative. They lived in Europe and Asia from about 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. Their physical features were unique and distinct from modern humans. They had robust, sturdy physiques and shorter limbs, which helped them to adapt and survive in colder environments. They had a distinct facial structure, with a larger middle portion of their faces and cheekbones that were angled inward. Their nose was large and bulbous, serving the dual purpose of humidifying and warming the air they breathed in the colder regions in which they lived. This was another one of their distinguishing characteristics. Their bodies were also significantly more heavily muscled and compact in comparison to ours, which aided them in their day-to-day -day activities as well as in the pursuit of food. Their brains were the same size as, or even larger than those of modern humans, even though they had a stocky build. They had large skulls that were rounded and had a brain capacity of approximately 1,500 to 1,750 cubic centimeters, which is slightly larger than the typical brain size of a modern human. This suggests that their cognitive abilities may have been comparable to ours, or even superior to ours in some cases. Contrary to popular belief, Neanderthals were not primitive cavemen. They were highly skilled and advanced humans with impressive abilities. They were adept hunters of large animals, and their diet consisted of a variety of plant foods. They had an intricate knowledge of their environment and were able to utilize their surroundings to their advantage. Neanderthals were also known for their expertise in creating and using complex tools. They had a diverse set of tools that were designed for specific purposes. They could make clothing for themselves, which is an impressive feat that demonstrates their knowledge of the materials available to them. They were also able to control fire, which allowed them to cook their food, stay warm in cold weather, and create tools and weapons from heated materials. In addition to their practical skills, Neanderthals also displayed evidence of artistic and symbolic behavior. They created objects that were not purely functional but had a symbolic or ornamental purpose. They made use of various materials, such as bones, shells, and ivory, to create these objects. There is also evidence that Neanderthals intentionally buried their dead, which is a highly symbolic act. Some of their graves were even marked with offerings like flowers, which suggest a belief in an afterlife or some sort of ritual significance. It was found that the male genitals of Neanderthals were approximately the same size as our own today. In comparison to the male genitalia of many other primate species, human male genitalia is disproportionately larger. In contrast, the male genitalia of many other primate species is proportionally smaller. Researchers have concluded that our own genitalia and those of Neanderthals were most likely indistinguishable from one another due to the similarities that exist between our DNA and that of Neanderthals. This makes sense when taking into account the high level of genetic similarity that exists between the two species, and it also provides additional evidence that our genitalia was compatible with theirs. Even though modern humans and Neanderthals belong to entirely different species, this did not prevent them from having sexual encounters with one another. DNA analysis has provided conclusive evidence that humans and Neanderthals engaged in sexual activity with one another. A genetic analysis of the remains of a person who lived 40,000 years ago revealed that 11% of that individual's genome belonged to the extinct Neanderthal species rather than to humans. The amount of Neanderthal DNA found in a human is the highest ever recorded for such a discovery. There are even people living right now whose DNA still contains remnants of Neanderthal. It is extremely possible that raping between species was a common occurrence in the past. Likely, humans and Neanderthals did not agree to have sexual intercourse with one another. It is also highly likely that raping between species was not uncommon. It is highly unlikely that the two species chose to consort with one another due to the difficulty of communicating with one another. If this turns out to be the case, it may suggest that humans and Neanderthals had a bloody history together, in which humans were the only ones to survive. The way that modern humans and Neanderthals conceptualize their relationships with their close relatives is one of the most significant ways in which they differ from one another. The toe bone of a female Neanderthal was discovered in a cave in Siberia. Genetic testing revealed that the Neanderthal's parents were more distantly related to one another. It is very possible that the parents were half-siblings, similar to how an aunt and her nephew are each other's biological parents. The degree of inbreeding found in this particular specimen was determined by researchers to be significant 
significantly higher than is typical for any species. This leads one to believe that this was not a one-time mistake. It has recently come to light that Neanderthals are to blame for humans inheriting genes that put them at risk of developing genital ulcers. Beckett's disease is a condition that can cause a variety of symptoms, some of which include blindness, ulcers in the mouth and genital area, and inflammation. People who have the Neanderthal gene HLA-B51 have an increased risk of developing the disease. Beckett's disease, Crohn's disease, lupus, and diabetes are some of the other conditions that have been shown to have a connection to ancient DNA. According to several pieces of DNA evidence, there is evidence that humans and Neanderthals did breed with one another. It would appear that this romantic relationship between members of different species has been going on for at least 100,000 years. It is estimated that the two species have been breeding together for the past 60,000 years, and as a result, they have produced fertile offspring, the descendants of which are still around today. Along this timeline, it is believed that thousands upon thousands of these sorts of marriages took place. Since Neanderthals were never found in Africa, this fact demonstrated that Homo sapiens must have migrated out of Africa much earlier than we had previously believed. The interbreeding of humans and Neanderthals have significant implications for our understanding of human history and the evolution of our species. This genetic exchange shows that humans have been living in Eurasia for over a hundred thousand years, which is much earlier than previously thought. The fact that humans and Neanderthals could successfully interbreed indicates that they were similar enough genetically to produce offspring, which raises important questions about the relationship between the two species. Paleontologists have dedicated years to understanding the fate of the Neanderthals. Theories abound, but climate change and human migration are often cited as the most likely factors that contributed to their disappearance. As the climate changed, it is possible that the environment became inhospitable to Neanderthals, leading to their decline. Alternatively, the arrival of modern humans may have put pressure on the Neanderthal populations, leading to their extinction. However, the discovery that Neanderthal DNA is present in modern humans has led to a new theory, that the Neanderthals did not become extinct at all, but rather they interbred with modern humans and their genes were absorbed into the human population. It is possible that the Neanderthals did not simply disappear, but rather they merged with humans and became part of our genetic heritage. This idea challenges our traditional view of human evolution as a linear progression from one species to the next. Instead, it suggests that different human species coexisted and interbred, leading to a more complex and interconnected history than we previously imagined. The interbreeding of humans and Neanderthals represents an important milestone in our understanding of human history and provides us with new insights into our genetic makeup. Thank you for joining me today as we explore the intimate lives of our hominid cousins, the Neanderthals. We've discovered some strange and unexpected facts about how Neanderthals may have mated, from the size of their genitalia to the genetic evidence of humans and Neanderthals engaging in sexual activity. It's clear that these relationships between members of different species have been going on for at least 100,000 years, and that the two species have been breeding together for the past 60,000 years. Through our exploration of Neanderthal intimacy, we've gained a deeper understanding of our evolutionary past and the complex behaviors of our closest extinct human relative. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery, and we look forward to sharing more exciting scientific findings with you in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below for more content like this. See you at the next one!